All right. Hello, everyone. I um, wanted to welcome you to the webinar this week. And uh, we are, I have a laptop right out here in the shop this time, so I don't have to do it from my phone. I apologize for, for that last time. And it actually going through and editing it right now, uh, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was. And uh, we should have that. We had to do a fair amount of editing with it stopping and starting. So uh, we'll have that up shortly. Um, gonna, going to go ahead and, and get started today. Uh, again, I just wanted to talk to you guys about how to comment to us. So make sure over on the right hand side, if you're on snowy.com forward slash live, that's uh, one of the best places to watch this so that you are able to comment as well. Uh, so go over to the right hand side and there's a Twitter feed, a Facebook feed, and then a, a stream feed. What did that thing say? It's called social stream. And it will ask you what credentials you want to use to be able to comment. So go ahead and, and sign into those. Use those to be able to submit questions. Again, remember, these webinars, they're for you. They're, they're more for you than they are for us. So if you have any questions, any concerns about shavers, by all means, ask those during the middle of this. If you have anything that is that you would like to ask uh, us while we're here, please save those for the end, and we'll address uh, those at the end as well. Um, I'm going to act a little more like a moderator on this one. I have Carl and Greg and, and Gordon will be coming in for a bit as well. So if you have, and maybe even Estella. Uh, so if any of you have any questions uh, for them concerning other things, again, do that at the end, but also uh, you'll have access to them right now and, and not just me this time. So uh, we'll go ahead and get started. <clears throat> I'll, I'll introduce you right here. We have Carl. Uh, Carl is the is one of the owners of Snowy Shave Guys. Gordon is the other. They're both actually my brothers. And, uh, and then we also have Greg. And come show your pretty face, Greg. Mm -hmm. Greg doesn't want to be on camera, so everybody be patient with Greg. Greg, he, uh, Greg's the one that heads up our shaver manufacturing. So uh, between Carl and Greg, uh, I, I mean literally every, every piece of these shavers, these guys create from scratch. Mm -hmm. So they're the they're perfect to be able to, to ask these questions. And then also Gordon and myself and even Estella, we, we run a ton of events. So we've had it where, um, we, we, you know, we've worked with these machines under high, high pressure. So we, we, we could answer those questions as well. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to flip this around to where you guys can see shavers and I'll, I'll zoom in the laptop and, and get right in when we're talking about detailed aspects. And, uh, and I'll also be setting it down and have it at a distance so that I can moderate your questions as well. So, thank you, and we'll get started. Okay. So, um, uh, we wanted to um, address a few of the things that go on with the shaver and what people do, that, and um, why some people will have a, a particular problem and other people don't. So, um, we'll just we have one opened up here. We'll just kind of go into some things with it. So. It seems like this has been, you know, I probably have these out now for 15 years and motors go out and gearboxes go out, but this kind of been the year of um, how do you take the wheel off of the shaver. You can see that there. So I just, there's a few options. One is use a big branch like this and not all of the, um, the uh, shaver, shaver, some are so old they don't have this stainless steel socket here. But if you do this way, and you you got to make sure you go clockwise because it's reverse threads. And then if you do this, you have to jam up the motor from underneath, like with the screwdriver. You have to stop it. Then you take the risk of breaking the fins on the motor. But this is one way. Um, the way I prefer, a lot of people will will hit this, and um, and then it spins it loose. I usually put a block of wood on it because after they've been on for a while, they get pretty hard to come off. And then I know I'm low. If you hit up here or on this one, you take the risk of breaking it. So I'll put it real low and then I'll just give it a smack. And I smack it against the motor and I smack it hard enough, I break it loose. So then, you know, these just screw off. So, um, and then, and then you can put, now, now you can get to um, other well, you can remove the gearbox and everything from by taking off these bolts, these nuts here, 
then then the gearbox will drop and and you can replace the gearbox or pieces in the gearbox which we very seldom see or and but if you're going to change just the motor you don't have to do anything with this you can just do the motor from underneath um so uh, now we talk about that cast in that yeah this is cast in okay that, this this is not going to um, this is not going to undo this from this. I've had people hold this and try to turn this. This is cast. It's all one piece, and then you know once again it's got a reverse thread. This is usually on. In the case of this, this is off. So um, now we know that. Now let's go to this real quick. I just had a call today. Some people think this. These tabs here is what holds this blade on. And people think just putting the blade on that because of the look, you can have me a blade, Greg, because of the look of the tab, it's going to self lock. But it doesn't do that. If it did self lock, it makes it so hard to get the blade off, you go crazy because you're trying to turn it. Um, and if that doesn't get locked, then the blade falls down and rubs here. And if that's happening, now you're putting a little bit of aluminum in every shaped dice. So make sure that does not happen. And then to put this together, you put you put these on. I don't know how much detail I'll go in. Well, we're going to run this on. Yeah. So, um, just, you know, quickly spin spin all this on. And then when there's, there's a little wiggle room on this, so um, when you, when you, get it on you want to turn it on and make sure it's not rubbing and if it is rubbing then you bump you bump this one way or the other so that there's no rubbing going on so get these on make sure they don't come loose sometimes we put like a screwdriver or, in um, the bottom of the paddle we might go like that shimmy. yeah but if it, it, they should never experience that though but if it happens to rub in the in the bottom here this blade, if it's rubbing down, which would be really strange that that would happen, because we usually take care of this at the factory, um, then by undoing, if you can put a washer in here, are you showing that? Yeah, and it lifts this up. But the higher you lift that up, the bigger pieces of snow can go underneath the blade, so the bigger boulders or pieces are gonna come out in your uh, snow, in your shaved ice. So you you don't you want to have that as tight as you can because it's like it's like a seal you want it as tight as you can without it rubbing let's just put it that way so you can um, be be careful here um, use safety just when you work on this unplug it just have some of the experience run it but so I'm I'm running it and um, if I needed to I would I would loosen these a little and bump it around so it didn't rub but it I. When it rubs, you know it sounds like a symbol. Uh, so it's it's not rubbing. So we'll we'll put this together and, and shave with it some here, and maybe just go through the whole thing. Maybe you finish it up for me, Greg. Put it together some. You know, you take these little wing nuts and you stick it in in there and spin them up. So fairly easy. And uh, you know, most I mean, if you can own one of these, you're going to need to know how to change the blade. The blade will shave, shave like 10,000 shaved ice, so 5 to 10. Um, when they wear out, you throw them away. Very easy. The next blade should be better than any blade you've ever got. We, we keep improving them. We keep making ideas to make them better. And we have ideas now still. One, one day, in, in five years from now, the blade you buy for this machine is going to make a snowier, better product than the blade you're buying today. So... Greg will button that up. We're going to go to the block shaver. We're going to put ice in this, right? Okay. So, to load, let's say, okay, we just finished off the ice. I want to show that. Um, it's time to put a new block in it. Uh, and, and, you know, part of this set, what webinar today is what problems do people have? And we're going to go also into making the snow and why some people have a soft shaved ice and some people have a hard shaved ice. We have a block ice have enough. Yeah. So, okay, the, that, that raises the, the foot up by pushing load and then the, it won't, it won't la allow this to run with, um, we need a foot pedal on this too. Let's get, we just swap it on the back. Uh -oh. Should we just go back to the cube? No. Yeah. 
Well, let's just show this. Part. Yeah, let's show this part. Okay. Normally, I keep the bag in my hands and to not touch the ice. But um, so now, now the ice is in there. I'm bringing that down without it running. I've got the lid up so the wheel won't run. It just kind of takes away all that. And it usually doesn't go down that fast because you have right in this area here, and we kind of we've chose to keep it out of sight. We have a, a speed control that you can turn, and you might want to show that. See how slow it's going. If if I it always goes up fast, correct? But down I can go. I can run it. So that's going to make it so. If you don't push the ice real hard, it's going to pass across. The blade's going to pass across it more, and it's going to make a snowier product come out. So, okay, now now that's more or less down. So, so, uh, so just clarify that. So now this this lid was dropped, which okay. now made it, which now connected a circuit to be able to allow the thing to run. I just yeah, want everybody to know that lid. He just now shifted that down and over these, which made the blade now able to spin yeah it's I mean we have it there for it's a safety so when this lids up this won't run and um, we also have this cheese grater type blade for the safety too because when I first started I had knife blades that were brutally dangerous I felt and people did get hurt by them so anyway now I put the lid down it allows his foot it allows this to run and uh, and now the foot pedal uh, I'm, I'm lowering it, I'm stepping on the foot pedal, and I'm bringing the, this foot is pushing the ice, I'm bringing it down into the blade. If it feels too slow, I've got my speed control here, and I can, I, I can turn it up, I can, I can turn it up like a madman if I want, but that, that's not the goal here. The goal is to, uh, is to make nice snow. Now I want to show you something else about this. Um, let's just use it. Um, it. Okay. When you take your foot off the foot pedal, it is going to run for a second. And what that does is cuts cuts the the pressure that you have from the foot pedal pushing the ice into the blade. It cuts that away so that the ice doesn't. It's not sitting on the blade with a load. And so the next time you go to the shaver, it's got all this load on it. It's kind of removed that load. So, um, so okay. I'm going to tune this up where I like it. Probably there. Now, I took my foot off and it ran for a split second. You, it, you, it's hard for you to notice, but, but I notice it. And I'm also watching that I don't, I stop the snow before it gets to this area here, otherwise it's going to start to go up the spout, this this chute here. If it does go up in it, it's easy to clear it out. Let's get a, a chipper and we'll show how we do that. Now, okay, I want to show you something else. When you shave this, now I'm going to shape it. I'm just going to shape it. I I see people all the time. They're like they're like doing this. They're like lifting the machine. They're like turning this into a boulder, a rock. A, they're ruining the shaved ice. That that's not it's not what you do. You, you shave it and, and you, you learn to stop right. You take this, which is really soft and fluffy, and you just shape you just softly shape it. Now without a spoon straw, spoon straw goes right down into the bottom real easy and nice. Now, okay, let's say I, I overfilled it. I didn't stop it in time. I just plugged it like this. It, it's all plugged in this spout here. Um, if I take the chipper that comes with it, in case you got to carve a block of ice so that the, it, the door can close and stuff nicely because sometimes the blocks are all different shapes. I, I'll just give this a little push and it just shoves it into where the power of the motor is going. You got It's going to launch, launch that snow out like that. Get that okay? Now, now, should we show something else? Um, okay. They got me a spoon straw. I wanted to show this, how it just, uh, I mean, if you, if you can't just go to the bottom of the cup, then you, you've overpacked it. Or you're, 
Um, there's a few other things. Um, your ice could be really wet or it could be really small pebbles of really wet ice. So it's going to go in as a hard slush ball. Not everybody. I mean, we, we make this as, as simple and easy to run as possible, but it still takes some common sense. Um, like, don't pack it so hard. It always blows me away how many people I see pack them to the point that they ruined it. And then people walk away and they're trying to eat this shaved ice and they're like doing this. I'm like, oh my gosh, every kid knows. when they should be able to eat it and it's soft and snowy and nice. And, um, and then we're going to do the cube in a minute too. And there's a few things about that. So, but while we're on the boss, I want to show, and you've seen this probably. Um, there's a couple items we have that, um, and now we've changed this snow. So you can either, this catch, you can either use a cup like this. Uh, or you can put this up in there now and you can take this flower cup and and uh, we're going to make a big old ball on this. I, my favorite, people have always said, no, we love your shaver, but we, we, uh, we can't use the flower cup with it. So anyway, we, we, we've made these changes here where uh, there, there you made a flower cup. And it's, you know, the other shavers, they, they shave a ribbon of snow and they hand catch it and hand catch it and hand catch it. 45 seconds later, they've got a shaved ice. Um, where, And then people struggle getting this shape and some people shoot it into this and shoot it into this and try to merge them together. And that never, it treats the snow very nice. This has all been shot in. It's all the same consistency. And, uh, and if I want this ball bigger, then I shoot a little more in, and I make it bigger. And bigger and bigger. We can make them this big, but I don't think you want them that big. So, what have I missed? Anything? Let's do the cube. cube. So, on the cube, quickly, you can get all kinds of cubes. You can get little pebbles. Even if you're going to do little pebbles, you're going to make very bad shaped ice because we treat this cube here as uh, a miniature block of snow, a, block, a miniature block of ice. And we, we take it, let's see if you can see this, we take it and we shave it down like this. And it, I think you're seeing that? Yep. It, um, it just, it's just barely shaving it. Treats this like a block. But, you know, the only thing, once this gets down so small, what can pass through this slot is going to pass through this slot as a piece. We say 90% shaved, 10% pinhead sized pieces. Uh, one other thing we talked about, if you have this blade in there and it's up in the air a mile, then you might get um, pea sized pieces coming underneath this. So the tighter that can be, the, the better uh, snow, the, the longer the ice stays in there before it can pass out. Okay. So, if you have really cold ice, and you bet you're in a vent, you're, you're pulling it out of a freezer, sometimes it, it's in here and it, it's so cold, it's like powder, it won't pack. And if that happens, we, we told people, you gotta lower the temperature of that. Now, we've got a problem with this. It's, it's full of, um, it's full of, um, really cold ice, and every time we make one, yes, it, um, it, it, it's not, it's like that, the snow gets stuck up in here, because it's all powdery. Okay, put that on foot. All right, see how I, I shaved that? I stopped before it went in the spout. Here, bring that snow. This, this Show one them stops that. on demand. Okay. I mean, this is really, this is like a big part. That snow is so dang comparable to the block. It's unreal. It's very, it's very fine. And yeah, it, you know how it almost it's gonna looks act like, like sponge. I mean, there's no tricks. We just, we just shaved what's here. Now, if I put in real soggy, wet, a bag full of water, and the ice cubes are this big, I'm going to get crappy snow out of this machine. It, it just will be. So, you know, then you shape it. And I didn't, I didn't slam it. I've seen people lift the machine up, packing that. 
That's not the point of this. This is just to take and make it pretty for people when they get it. You're going to syrup it up and it's going to crush it, melt it down anyway. So um, let's, let's, not, let's not pack them. Let's keep them soft and nice to eat. Um, if, if your ice is so cold, this is powder and it sticks up in here, then you could use a thing of water. And when I say water, I mean like a couple spoonfuls is all it takes. People have people have a tendency to it's all good, but they, they dump a whole bottle up here. That's not the point. If this bag, if I'm an event and this bag of ice just came out of a freezer and I've got no choice, I would take this bag and temper it a little bit with some water. Um, and I, I when we, we're hesitant to say that because people drown it, and that's not the point. You just want to. Yeah, hang on, hang on. All you gotta do is like. You know, I've already poured too much, just like that. And but, it's gonna do its magic or what it does. It but just, uh, this. just, just pretend you didn't put any in, and let me get close and show them again. Okay. If let's say this was giving me problems, I couldn't get the snow out. It was fouling up. Okay. I would go, I would go like that, and and then I would attempt to shave it. What it's gonna do is it's just gonna clean everything out, turns it into a slush ball. Maybe the first one you throw away. But um, anyway, it, it's that easy. And then once again, let's say you want to do the flower cup. You throw this piece up in there. Now, now the shavers, the flaps don't have to come out. It's got a clear shot all the way. And, and this attaches in. And then you just get yourself. People, people, some people really like this flower cup idea. They're expensive. But that doesn't matter because you're charging an extra dollar for it. You pay 25 cents to be able to charge an extra dollar. Shoot that in. Use it to shape it a little bit. Make sure you got enough. It's almost tricky because you're you're shaping it from a new area. But anyway, it works like that. So, same thing here if it plugs up. Usually, it, I mean, look, it, it does not want to plug. It wants to self, it, it uses the power of the motor to, to clean itself out. So, anyway, if your ice is softer and really wet, you're going to get this bar a little more often than if it's cold. If your ice is cold, it uses pretty cold, and you control the temperature going in, you control what's in here, you're going to make a better product most of the time than then if this if things get really wet and soggy, then it's not going to be quite as nice. It's going to be wet and soggy and full water and slushy and all that. So, good snow. A lot of times in a vamp, people never let this thing get a breath of air because they keep dumping ice in it. You want to empty it every once in a while and like get it cleaned out and uh, start with put more ice in, but let it let it run for a minute with no ice in it, so it has a chance to clean itself out. And the motor has a chance to breathe. And the motor gets a chance to run at full speed. These motors always run in, in start mode. They're, when they're running, they're working. They're not like a motor on a fan that gets up to speed and just wee runs freely all day. Um, these are these work, and it's, it's they need. If they can run free for a little while, it sucks a lot of cold air through them and cools them down. It makes them work yeah. better. And we're talking like, longer. you know, so people have a, a, a concept of time. It, we're talking like 30 seconds yeah. a minute, right? Just let that yeah. thing run for 30 seconds before yeah. you put a new batch of ice in. Yeah, let it, let it, I mean, we, we turn this on and just let it run. Um, you, you don't yeah. have to, you can put it on on and it's just gonna go. Oh, we have the momentary. Do you have that? Oh, you have a momentary. Um, but you know, if we were shaving and then we would just let it let it um, run with with nothing in it. And that allows the motor to run at full speed and it's now pulling cold air through it and cooling it off. Sometimes people don't ever let this thing have a breath. Now, um, I, I wanted to say a, a few things that um, we always have people call us. We, we had our ice get, our blade get hurt from a clip off the bag or a rock, or maybe they just went to an event with a worn out blade and they're going to lose a thousand dollars. 
So we scramble trying to figure out how to get them a blade at a last minute's notice. And you know, it, it's hard, it's expensive, it's, it's hard. I've gone to the airport several times finding a flight going to someone's town so I could get them a blade so they wouldn't lose a thousand dollars. Get Have extra stuff, have an extra blade. If you really want to be in this business, you should go as far as to have an extra machine. So um, and you can have extra housings, you have an extra motor, but um, it, if you if you lose one day in advance, you might lose as much money as, as what the shaver costs. You could have bought yourself a, a shaver for what you lost, so have, have spare parts. If you get a block of ice and yours is a different shape than ours, we can modify these to fit uh, your block of ice. Make them bigger, make them smaller, make them steeper, make them push harder, make them not push as much. That We can work with that. You could even take and trim these down to make them fit. People use a hair dryer and heat them up and bend them into a position where they like them. All, all that's possible. So, so know that. It's a good time to buy this. We've had them now out for a couple years and we pretty much worked through all the problems. Like this part, these pieces up here, they're made out of polycarbonate instead of PETG, which makes them twice as expensive but twice as strong. And, um, which, you know, it's just less, less trouble with this. And there's a, 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 a Greg, he had a show. He's got a theory. He, he, this is how he, he puts this on. He's like one motion, and it's on. Um, and the, that's something. That's it's a good trick, really. It's something you want to learn. Um, oh, and if 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 your ice had bumps on it here, and it's fight, you're fighting it. You can always use this, and then you can you can do this a couple times too. So it's yeah, um, this this right here is like scraping that, sculpturing it, so that when you do this, it's easier to do. You know, and and we talk a lot about compressed. Uh, as opposed to like a solid block of ice. T talk about that real quick. Well, um, we say like, we can shave like, it, and we can, and it fits. Um, there is, it is compressed cubes, and it is full of air, and the ice, I believe, chips off from one cube next to the other cube, and there's an air pocket. So it doesn't make as good of snow, but it's, if your block of compressed ice is really cold, it makes a it still makes a very, very good product. So you think it's something different? No, that's exactly right. And so the block in here, just so everybody can see it, that block is a solid block of ice, and it's not compressed in any way. It's, in fact, it's a block that, that oh, no, we didn't. We actually had a company that yeah, delivered that. Yeah, we huh? bought this. I was yeah. thinking we froze our own, but. This one was frozen in a bag. I don't like it, because you got to be careful you don't shave the bag into. The bag sometimes will tear off in the ice. So if that happens, you got to take this chipper, and you should carve, if the bag was stuck in here, then I would recommend you chip that off. Sorry about that, Aaron. That's okay. But, um, and then a nice thing, this shaver, I can take this, usually we save the bag, put it on it, and we can take that out and put it back in the freezer. We can put it in, make one, take it out, and put it away. Other machines, boy, that, getting that ice in and out is a huge commitment. It's difficult. Once it goes in, uh, I, before I had... Um, snowy I had snow shack and I made that shaver and that block shaver you put that block of ice in it's there it we would just tell the workers instead of running their knuckles up against knife blade we'd just tell them leave it and just let it melt down and put a new blade a new block in the morning don't don't try to get it out so it's nice it comes out it's a good advantage yeah and and I don't know how many people heard it but normally when you're placing the block in you you're handling the bag you, you yeah. kind of keep the bag around Work it and put it in, right? Good. So you're not handling yeah, it. Yeah, I help with it. You know, normally, I just, I, ne I never take the bag off. I just hold, take the bag and I use it. I, I, or I'm going to put on a pair of gloves. Nobody wants to see. You girls handling can that get block. away with it. Two girls can get away with it. <laughs> Guys, man, boys, they can't. <laughs> Touch in the eyes. Um, yeah, I'm going to uh, set you up here so I can address questions in case right. people have them. But if there's other things that you think of, go ahead and. Is there any questions? Oh, you're going to look at some questions. All right. That's the bag. So, yeah, that's the bag. And I'll be open yeah, I'm, not, I'm not seeing any questions. If, I, if any of you have questions, right now is the perfect time to ask them, and, and uh, I'll, I'll hang tight real quick.
this is a tight bag. They're molding that ice in this bag, so they've got a tight bag. The water that went in this bag filled it up 100%. So now we put this back in the freezer and use it the next day. Or in an hour. This this brim here, the rim, that's where the top lives. It doesn't live in. It, it lives here on the edge. A lot of people, I, I've seen people walk up to this machine and, and hold the cup like this and shave, which is crazy. It shoots off the top, fills their shirt pocket. You know, this goes here. I'm not up here. I'm back here. I pull the flap up like this. I hold it. I'm rough with it. I'm squishing it. 100% of the snow is going to go into this cup. I'm catching every bit. So, um, and then it allows me to put a top on it, and uh, here, why don't we, oh, I emptied it, and then you just shape it, and yeah, it's real neat, real nice. When you get the shaver, this isn't, this isn't installed, it's rolled up, and uh, so you take this hose, and you just slip it over that, and it's just friction fit, you just shove it in, that's it, now it's installed. We have, uh, some of these pop now and then, or uh the, the, the seal comes has a leak in it. One way you can test it is by crimping down on this foot pedal part. You can see me smashing it. I'll plug the end of the hose with my finger and if it holds it dimpled, I know there's no hole. Now if I let go, it fills itself back up with air. Um, anyway, some people are like, I'm stepping on it and it's not turning the shaver on. It's because... Put your, put your hands closer because together. it's already flat. It's because if or, there's a leak, I can compress it and there's not enough pressure to push that switch. So, I always tell them, you know, uh, disconnect it, push down on it, cover it with your finger, and if it holds there, then, um, then you've got a switch problem, not a foot pedal bladder problem. If I let go, it fills back up. <clears throat> You know, also, if you think, if you have a problem, you can have, when this is hooked up, if you push on this, you should be able to hear the switch in the shaver going click, 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 click. So, um, so here's the 1,000. There, if you want to see the difference. It, it holds not nearly as much ice as the 3,000. And um, it's, I'll just tell you, if, uh, if different people, yeah, some people love this machine. My wife loves it. I, I like the three thousand. Um, the uh, it, if if you have a clump of if you have a clump of ice, some disadvantages, and there's advantages because it has a small footprint. It's lighter. It's easier to move around. It's cheaper. Um, disadvantages: if you have a clump of ice this big, it's going to get stuck in here, and you'll have to take an ice pick and break it up. It shaves very much the same as the three thousand. Okay, so shave like this. Once again, if I think I got too much snow, I usually knock it off at this point. And then this shaper, once again, um, I'm just going to barely use it. It's only to knock it off and make it pretty. It's not to, um, you know, it's not to pack it. You don't want to turn this into a, something you can't get a spoon straw in. If you can't get a spoon straw in your snow, then you've done something wrong, so step back and relearn how to make a shaved ice with these shavers. Could, okay. Could you show them how to make a shaved ice with just the toggle switch? Oh, okay. Let's yeah, say uh, okay. the foot switch has gone bad, or I don't want to use it, then I can just use... And even the new ones, they, they actually have this um, momentary switch now. And it's not a toggle switch. The profile's lower, and it, it's just you know you push on it and uh, it just you know. So this runs two ways: by hands free with the foot switch or with the switch right here. I okay. I don't. I would say that this machine here is great if you're going to be doing special events. This machine is probably tailored more for. Uh, people who are not just depending on shaped ice, perhaps they have cotton candy or, or popcorn and they're adding this to their line um, because if you're going to be depending on just one item, thank you, I, I think this would be the one that you would want.
So that's why we have the two different If you're sizes. doing a vance, you're rocking and rolling, right. you're going to make a lot. This machine. Right. If you got a sandwich shop or an ice cream parlor and you want to add shaved ice, this is, this is a good machine. You have a customer here and there. You're going to have lined up customers. This is, one's wrong. Right. Customers here and there, this one's good. Um, talk to them about if, let's say, yeah, they've you had this. Let's say, okay. It's Gordon. If, hello. <laughs> if you've had a window of time where your, your machine's full oh, yeah, of ice. This is good. And uh, you haven't had a customer for a while, and this is more for like the ice cream shops and people that are adding shaved ice to to their location. There may be a window of time where they haven't made a snow cone, but their hopper is full of ice. Um, as that as it sits there, of course, the ice melts and it drips and it gathers in the bottom of or in in the machine. One there, thing you would always go ahead. There's some snow in here there there is snow that's shaved that hasn't exited out yet so it's acting it like a sponge like well it's it's okay, um yeah. soggy it's 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 wet it's a saturated. slush ball yeah so, water saturated no syrup can go in this because it's full of water so the the rule of thumb is if you know it's been sitting there and you can even feel it when it the the snow hits the cup but you can see it i always will clear the machine out meaning get rid of the slush show them um I mean, this I would be like uh, that that long just to clear it out. I can look at it, inspect it. I know it's I've I've made it back to snow. The water's gone, and then continue on to make a snow cone. Another yeah. thing for people that are only making snow cones um, one at a time here and there. If I were to take this cup and fill it to the rim with ice cubes. If I dump that in there, it should pretty much make the perfect snow cone. As it shaves, it's filling the cup up with air voids. So as I shave a cup full of ice, it will create enough to make the dome. And that way, I only have to load the machine per snow cone if, if, I'm, if I don't need to fill it at that time. Hey, and I got some. Um, when, when I first started, 36 years ago, I bought machines, and they were made out of stainless and aluminum. And there was so much aluminum on them that it went from, you put the block in, and it went from water, there was a shaped ice, slosh, there was another shaped ice, snow. So um, it took that much ice volume to get the temperature of that machine right so it would make snow. And then if you had an hour go by, you had to do it again. My machines, great sales point, advantage of my machines, they're, they're plastic, durable, modern stuff, cleanable, food grade, um, and the temperature changes like that. If you walk up, usually the first one you make, you want to just tap it, chuck it, and that now the slush, the water's gone, and then shave, shave. It's not what it used to be. Run, 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 it's all water, run a little bit longer, it's all slush, run a little bit longer, finally there's some snow. And there's people out there that have machines to this day who know exactly what I'm talking about. Because the machines are still made, and they do just exactly what I just said, where this machine goes right to snow quicker. So less waste. Yeah, less waste. Yeah. Easier to get the block of ice in and out of this machine. You're not buying new cranks or committing it under flaps that have it living in there forever. Did you talk about like that holds eight pounds of ice, this holds four? No, I just said this holds a lot more than this. Um, okay. since, since we still have some time, uh, th this machine will actually hold, the Snowy 3000 will actually hold an eight pound bag of ice where the Snowy 1000 holds half as much Ice. Did Carl show the blade differences in sizes? Uh, we didn't show the blade. Hey Greg, you chased me a 1,000 blade. Um, one cool thing about the 3,000 is pretty much across the board, across the U.S., everything is packaged in 8-pound bags, which is really nice um, because you can tear the bag open, pour the whole bag in the machine, and then discard the bag um, instead of Having a bag, filling it half full, now it's sitting on your counter, running it back to the freezer. You can just do it all in one hit. Uh, I wanted to show you the difference in sizes of the 3000 blade 
versus the 1,000. Um, it's drastic. Obviously, this makes this machine very, very fast and the 1,000 slower, as well as uh, you'll have to fill that twice as often as the 3,000. Um, at one time, I used to know how many blades it there were. Like 200 or 250 inches of shaving surface. Yeah, if you were to add up each one of these, I mean, just three slots is an inch of blade surface. It's a lot to go to. So we're, we're talking this blade's going to last a long, long time. When it does go bad, it's or dull. Um, and it's a throwaway item. And how do you know when it's dull? It pretty much, um, your machine will just gradually get slower and slower and slower until you no longer care for how slow it is and you change it out. Yeah. If a blade goes from shaving to instantly not shaving within a couple snow cones, um, that's a sure sign that you've gotten something in there, maybe a clip off the bag of ice, or if you broke the ice and it picked up, a, I've seen people break bags of ice on the ground, and it picks up a pebble, a pebble rock sticks to the outside of the bag, they dump the bag in and the pebble falls off the bag and goes in with the blade. Um, but if a blade goes from shaving to not shaving, something hurt it. And you can usually um, tell too. Um, if you look at, at the blade, you'll see scar marks on it. Like, if it was a clip, you're going to have rust will show up. But if it was a rock, it's going to look like a rock has gone in you'll, there. You'll I, see I, a, and, a ring all the way around it, that scar mark. Yeah. Especially if you hold mm -hmm. it up in the sun, you can definitely tell that uh, something, something's gone through it. Has gone round round. Um, I, always, I always take spare blades with me to every event. And... Um, I might get done at the event and, or, and, and not know a worker changed it out and I'm putting back in the, a bad spare blade. One easy way for me to tell if a blade's sharp or not, and you can't hurt yourself with your fingers, but if you reverse on your fingernail, if you drag on it, you, you're not going to be able to see this, but it's actually shaving the top of my fingernail. This, this blade's it's, awesome. It's, it's kind of doing the same or, thing. Or you can um, do what Carl's going to do. This piece of ice does. I mean, if it's not doing that, then you got a dull blade. There, there's, there's get hurt. There's, there's never reason to get in here to grab any ice. Um, if your ice isn't broken up enough, it shouldn't have gone in there. But uh, that's what I it, you, you, you just don't want your hands in there. You uh, there's no reason for that. But uh, yeah, if your ice is going round and round and round and nothing's happening. The blade is definitely... Put a new blade in it, you'll think you have a whole new machine. Gold. You'll love it. It'll knock the cup out of your hand. It'll come out so fast. The other the other cool thing about this blade and the machine is if I, if I were to make a snow cone and bring in a stranger off of the street and show them how to make it, I know my snow cone will taste identical to the stranger's snow cone. Uh, the consistency is the same across the board. Because I don't have to adjust any blades, I'm not adjusting clutches or controlling things with my hand, the pressure of the block of ice or cubes. Anyway, the consistency is a, a sweet part um, as well, and it's super easy to, to train people. Uh, you, you know, you were talking about having a spare blade, and what what we really encourage people to do is yeah. to make things faster. Is we already have a blade housing here. Why don't you just talk about so, that? So. He, he's talking about events, and I would even do this on location because it just makes it easier for your employees to change out a blade if they need to. Rather than have just a blade sitting at the location and I have to tear this apart, I have to pull the blade housing out, straighten out the tabs, pull the blade out, put the new blade in. I always have this part. So when I say spare, I'm actually taking the blade in the housing which speeds like things up a drastically. Complete a complete go. unit, ready. So if I was at an event and I needed to change out quickly, it's literally three mm. three outside thumb screws, four wing nuts, swap it, pull that and drop that one on and I'm back up and you can going almost in do a matter it between of customers. Yeah, in just minutes you can swap out a blade. If you gotta pull out pliers or start mm -hmm. twisting tabs, pulling the old blade out, putting a new one in and uh, it's you just, know, it's just the cat's meow if you can have both and just have it done at your event. It just will speed up your process. There, I, I want to say, um, I, there's been moments where I've opened a bag of ice and I've seen, I see a clip 
right in the top of the ice. Like before, before the bag was put like this, the machine fired off. So sometimes I've, I've seen nails, I've seen wood, I've seen crazy stuff in ice. So the ice also um, Gotta watch can, can bite you on the butt. You, you just, if you didn't have a spare blade, it's gonna cost you. So have a spare blade. It's gonna cost you next day air, it's gonna cost you a whole day's worth downtime. And uh, it's, it's sad, it's too bad that that happens to people, but it does. Some of the questions we get asked is maintenance, cleaning. Do you guys have any input on that? Um, it just water goes in. I, 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 I hate to, I mean, there's a little bit of maintenance in our owner's manual, but just it cleans itself as it goes. I, I hate to say put soap in it because it might stay in it and get in the snow cone. Uh, maybe the bleach sanitizing solution you could um, dump in here and uh, the one where you know you, you rinse it and you just set it it's soft it's not strong but it does sanitize it do that once in a while and wipe it wipe it you can and then when you have it tore apart um, wipe wipe underneath the housing and everything where hard water has been sitting and building up just scrub it up wipe it down with a rag we get those questions a lot. Yeah. The, um, the, the Board of Health here in Salt Lake, they want to see you not actually run a soapy water solution through it. They know water is just going into it. So what they want you to do is make up a batch of sanitizer solution, which, which is basically mostly water and a little bit of bleach. And there's a test strip that, to make sure it's safe. And you can uh, all, all generally um, pour some in it. And then I'll take my rag and I'll sanitize the whole machine with the sanitizer solution. But um, super easy to do. Pretty maintenance free. Yeah, it's very yeah, maintenance free. Okay. And I just checked for, you, for more questions. We don't have any more. Um, I just I saw a new approach how I have to actually see those. But um, it looks like we've addressed them all. If anybody has anything last minute, feel free. Other than that, I, you guys got anything else? No, it's always got good stuff coming out. Got uh, new things. It's it's uh, it's uh, the patent laws have changed, and it's first to file instead of who invented it these days. So um, you got to be careful what you say. So when we get stuff built, and, uh, patented, then we'll bring it out. Some things we have built, we're just waiting on. I always had a great return. That's a little do that. It's not like I want to. I just don't want somebody else patenting it, and then I'm stuck not being able to use it, or I have to answer to them when I'm the one that created it. And I've had that happen to me a couple of times with things. So um, it's like a necessary evil. But anyway, we got. We're an innovative company, and we've got good things happening all the time. And if there's a better way, we'll find it. And there always is a better way. There always is a better way. That's all I've got. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. And so just quickly, next week, uh, we will not be having a webinar. Um, we'll have another one two weeks from today. And we'll catch you guys then. Do a last minute check here. Actually, I can tell them that nobody's commenting. Yeah, I don't see any new questions or comments. So we'll catch you guys in a couple weeks. Thank you.